this video to mark 100,000 subscribers here on Hubnut, we are going to be driving one of the most iconic buses of all time, the AEC Routemaster. So we have come together with Pete and his bus, another YouTube channel, do go and check that out. We will be having a more detailed look around this particular bus, which has some interesting modifications, and perhaps one or two of Pete's other projects, because you seem to have more than one bus for I a know. start. I know, well, there's, I have a disease, and it's called collect as many strange toys as you possibly can, which goes anything from a tractor to a small motorbike to a bus that seats 72 people. Oh, I mean, this is just lovely, <laughs> the, the contrast. Yeah, is be nice is, to him, though, because he's co horrible. Co-star of the channel, yeah. <laughs> uh, who are you? Uh, but thank you so much for coming down, guys. I really appreciate it. No, no, and, no, uh, thank we're, you. We're going to show you how it works, and then you're going to go drive it. Yeah, looking forward to it. So, um, <clears throat> how do you drive a Routemaster? It's very similar to a normal car, believe it or not. Just higher up. Yeah. <laughs> so, the main thing, like, the, the length is actually not the issue. It's the height that you've got to worry yeah. about. Because it's trees, traffic signs, traffic lights. And before you know it, you can put a big gouge in the side of it. But I'm let's, sure that's not going to happen. Not do that. You'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one leg on there. And if you're feeling unstable, stick a leg on the wheel. And, and then I'm going to go fully mm. adventurous. Full and we're set. in. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's firm. Yeah, that's had a lot of use. Yeah. That's had a lot of London bottoms on it. So you've got your starter go. bomb in the in Starter there. bomb yeah. is in. Yeah. And then by your leg, further down, same place but further down, there's a big plunger which pokes out the wall. Oh, yeah. You're going to plunge that in, push it in. In. Is that that's, fuel? That's, that's fuel. Well done, yeah. yes. And then basically, I'll explain the steps before you do it. So what you're going to do, that black button up the top, that's yep. like a key. So you're going to turn it, and when it starts, you're going to let go of it. Okay? Right here. Make sure it's not in here. That's it. Oh, you, almost. You didn't catch the roll. I didn't catch it quite <laughs> Make sure she's not in gear now, we're not all good. Yeah, so second attempt, you've got to put the key back in. Key back in. Yeah, turn it to full, the black button, and, and then pull the key out. <laughs> That's it. And brake here. Oh, there we go. That's it, yeah. So the reason why she moves is because the flywheel is so big and it's fluid. Yeah. And because the fluid's cold and thick, so she starts rolling forward. Uh-huh. Okay? Cool, well, I'll put those somewhere safe. So yeah, 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 that's cool. Yeah, actually, oh, so you can give me the key because you won't need it now. That'll run for all day long now. Yeah, you're good. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so there's many big cogs turning. So you yeah. want to keep your foot on the throttle a bit. So the Cummins engine does this whole wavy thing when it's cold. Yeah. But in a minute, um, it'll be fully up to 10. And that's it. That's how easy it is. And okay. So, uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to show you. The flag's gone up. There's a flag that pops down. Yeah. Which says stop. And there's two lights, a white one and a red one. The white one's already gone out, that means the brakes are ready. And that is the pressure in the gearbox. Okay. Um, so as soon as that's up to uh, pressure, that will go out. Yeah. And then we're good to go. There we go then, he's just getting the gearbox pressure up again. There's a fluid flywheel, it's like a torque converter, but torque converter multiplies torque. And a fluid flywheel doesn't, it's much more sort of direct. But here she comes. Oh, Diego is triggered. Oh, that's a tight fit. Oh yeah, it scrapes a little bit. It's only the rubbing rail on the side. There we go. <laughs> so Pete's going to take us somewhere safe so I can have a go. I am beyond excited. I know this isn't the bus of my childhood, but still the Routemaster is so, so iconic. Oh, it even goes backwards. This is going to be a spectacular day. You will note a few non-standard things. We'll, we'll do that in the next video where we'll have a detailed look around this one because it's very clever. So here we are in the upper deck of RML 2355, or should I say bar ML 2355 rather, because it has been converted all downstairs into a bar. But this bus was actually bright green when it started life uh, as part of the London um, country service out in the sticks, which is fitting, we are out in the sticks today. Uh, AEC Routemaster was developed in the 1940s into the 1950s, I think 1954 is when the first prototype was built and it was just a brilliant joint effort between London Transport and bus manufacturer AEC. So AEC provided the running gear but London Transport was very insistent on what it wanted and it's a very clever design. 
It uses an all aluminium monocoque structure with steel subframes carrying the mechanical units. There is not a separate chassis, which was most unlike other buses at the time. Front suspension, independent, again very unusual. Also got powered hydraulic brakes, a bit like a Citroen. And uh, you've even got a fully automatic gearbox, although in the case of this one, it has actually been disconnected. So I have to, I will have to change gears manually. So we're just bouncing around on the top deck as we head to somewhere safer for me to have a go at driving it. Uh, well over 2,800 Routemasters were built in total between 1954 that prototype and uh, the last one was delivered in 1968. But the, their service life went on for decades. This bus ended service on the last day of Routemaster running in 2005. And it was built in 1965, so it had a full 40 years of service. It's remarkable. This is an RML, you can tell, because it's got this extra little side window. So it's just that little bit longer, 30 foot, compared to the 27 foot 6, I think, of the original. But yeah, just iconic buses. They, they lived in service so long because they were so good at what they had to do. The open platform meant people could hop on nice and easily. Uh, the, so much nicer for the driver compared to previous buses. So uh, yeah, a true revolution on wheels. And I'm very excited to have a go myself. So half cab buses are a bit of a peculiarity uh, of the UK. I don't think half cab buses really happened all that much elsewhere. But the engine is next to the driver, which leaves the rest of the vehicle all the way to the back window for passengers, or in this case, a bar. Plenty of drink. But by the time the Routemaster entered production, uh, manufacturers were working on rear engine buses. The beauty of the rear engine is that the driver could be opposite the entrance. So you only needed one person. A Routemaster always needed a conductor. So the driver was having a merry old time up here, didn't have to interact with passengers at all. Just the ding-dings of his conductor buddy at the back. And the conductor would walk around, collect fares, all passengers jumped on and off at the open platform. So a very different way of doing bus things, but all the noises. I've got to get some footage of this because this bus can do about 42 and a half miles an hour flat out. May not achieve that with me driving it today. So it's nice to get out and actually go for a run and really hear it in action. It sounds magnificent. Chris and Bella. Uh, August 1983. Are you out there, Chris and Bella? Do let us know. So here I am then, uh, about to drive the Routemaster, and this could not be more simple. Uh, put my foot on the brake, got a handbrake there, and uh, I am going to use first gear. So as soon as we're in, we're away. Put my indicator on, this massive indicator knob down here. Experience the rather impressive turning circle. You don't have to lift off the throttle when you're uh, doing it. These, these speed humps are a little vicious though, so we will slow down. Yeah, the fluid flywheel just makes this so, so easy. And because you sit right here at the front, you haven't got that front end swing of a larger bus. So it's amazingly easy to drive and it's a fair bit narrower. I think the bus regulations change. So this is narrower than the Nationals I've driven previously. And this meaty Cummins engine, a later replacement in 1992. So absolutely fantastic. Go for four. 
Oh, okay, I'm being told to go in here. The difficulties of communication when uh, Pete's in the back of the bus. But yeah, it's amazingly easy to place the mirrors. Are good, I think they're later editions as well. Give that turning circle a try again. That's just dropping us back into first again. That's what we do our maneuvering. Yeah, the brakes, powered hydraulics are extremely efficient. They leave you surprisingly um, full of confidence. Make sure the coast is clear. All right, round we go. Watch out for motorcyclists. Yeah, this is one of the easiest big vehicles I've ever driven. Brilliant. What a fantastic experience. Thank you, Pete. So originally, if you put it in fourth, it would have gone into fully automatic mode. That has been turned off on this example. But it's still an absolute doddle to drive. You can flick through the changes much more quickly than the later you know, pneumocyclic gearboxes. This one is just electronic control. I can see Pete hanging off the, uh, <laughs> the platform. I guess he doesn't get to do that very often on his own bus. Oh, look at that. Now, there's probably a question about which side the wiper should park for preference, but I'm leaving it there. But at least we've done the wiper test now. We're now going to do a further drive. We're actually going to go out into live traffic. Amazed Pete is trusting me with this. So uh, he's just giving me the thumbs up. So away we go. We're going to first. So much torque from this big old Cummins. 10.3 litres. One of several different engines they fitted to these. There were also um, Iveco and Scania engines fitted as well. The steering is quite slow, so I'd say that's the biggest limitation really. There we go, that's my um, sat nav kicking in. Actually, out on the actual road. Right turn, uh, right here. Amazing feeling. Oh, just lovely. Such an easy vehicle to drive. It all comes so naturally. Lovely Rover R8 there in Nightfire Red. I assume we're going to hit traffic, but so very, very um, what this car was, what car? What this bus was built for, really. It is a Saturday, it's going to be very, very busy. But look, the gearbox is even a delight on the downshift. Now we're crawling along in first gear and barely moving. You have to keep an eye out on those branches though, but this is an area served by double-deckers. 
mean, it has to be said, as, as refined as these are, the engine is right next to you, so you hear it massively. You're aware this is such a big vehicle. But this cab being stuck out at the front, it gives you a very good visibility. I've got an opening window just here to my right, that's for flicking your arm out for hand signals if needed and then uh, this big window on my left opens up as well and I think on some of them the windscreen opens too so plenty of ventilation going on I think that's what this chain is about gotta love the sound of a Cummins though hey eh? I feel like a proper bus driver and I much prefer this idea of just let the driver get on with it have the conductor to deal with the passengers and those rowdy drunks much better idea. I don't know if lifting is necessary because uh, from what I was reading they were designed to sort of slip from one gear to the next so we'll um, that's we'll experiment so we drive along in the traffic. A, a no lift scenario right we are going over to the right put my indicator on this feels proper because this is exactly the sort of conditions these buses would have seen when in service. No seatbelt by the way, no, no safety considerations really for the driver. Oh, this is one of my best filming days ever, this feels a very apt way to mark the 100,000 subs. Feed that wheel. Ambition achieved, I have finally driven an AEC Routemaster. It has been an astonishing experience. I am so grateful, Pete. So thank you very much for letting me have a go. Hey, and you're trusting welcome. me in busy traffic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, I'll say, I've, I've been driving these for nearly 10 years now, uh, but my man here got in it and he rocked it as if he'd been driving them for years. So I was really impressed. Oh, well done. You. Yeah, really cool. It's a good I, experience, I guess, right? Yeah, that, that love of buses all my life has finally <laughs> come in useful. But, yeah, yeah, cool. Brilliant experience. So thank you very much. We are going to chat to Pete more about this bus in a separate video so watch for that that'll be out very very soon but otherwise yeah thank you for watching and we shall see you in a future video farewell <laughs> <laughs> quick <laughs> beautiful <laughs> i love the sound effects